I didn't see the body at all. She when was I not went there. there. So, so, you. Welcome again to my channel. This is Trev from Trevescence, and today we are going to take a look at the interview done by Kamala Forbes with Shellyanne from Tea Time with Shelly. But before we get into it, guys, if you are new here, a very special welcome to you. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you are a returning traveler, I want to say thank you for your continued support. Now, you all know that recently, Kamla Forbes, many people know her as the right mango, as she calls herself, um, a.k.a. Little Bit of Blood. She has been trying to do damage control in the public. Why so? Because initially when Melissa Silvera died, she had come out and said she thought Melissa died from an aneurysm because there was a little bit of blood at Melissa's nose, which led us to believe that she had seen Melissa's body. Now, during the interview, she presented a story much to the contrary. Yeah, I didn't see the body at all. She when was I not went there. there so, so, you so wasn't there. did not I tidy did not. the body. <laughs> no. I, look at me, look at me. No, I did not. Look at and me. So, if we are to believe anything that Kamala says, we are going to believe now that she did not see the body. So, my next question is, who told her that there was blood at Melissa's nodes? Could it be that the person who gave her that information deliberately did so, knowing how she loved to run her mouth, knowing she would run along and start telling a tale of this aneurysm and this blood at the nose in an effort to defend Kilvera? Did somebody give her the dirty bath water to take out? Because until now, she's the only one who I have heard talk about blood at Melissa's nodes. Everybody else stuck to their story that she died in her sleep. She said when she went there, she hugged up Kilvera and she and him chatted a little bit. Was he the one who gave her that information? We don't know yet because even as the interviewer asked her about who was there, she was tripping over her tongue, not wanting to say some names. Who you see that you can remember? Yeah, I remember, but... You don't want to see? Yeah, them. I remember them, some of them. You understand? Anushka me? Yes. Bunting was there? No, yes, but yes, Anushka was there. Mm -hmm. um, so whoever gave her that bloody nose story must be laughing like a joker because now she's the one out here defending that argument, even though she didn't even see the body. What she did see, though, according to her, was the people who were coming and going at the crime scene. People were going upstairs and downstairs. She was dropping some names. She said Dr. Dawes was there when she was coming in. He was coming out. And Dr. Dawes becomes important in this story because initially people started to say that Dr. Dawes was the one who had pronounced Melissa dead. And he came out and he said he didn't pronounce anybody. He didn't want nobody calling up his name talking about he gave any injection or anything of the sort. I was never the one to pronounce anybody and do not call up my name about any nonsense about injections. She also dropped some other names, Manushka, Mikhail Phillips and others that I won't talk about right now. Um, they might become more important to the story later on, but for right now, not so much for me. Now, I'm not here to incriminate or implicate this woman in any part of this crime or the cover-up thereof. I'm just going by what she said. In one of her posts online, she had said she couldn't understand why the police, it took the police five weeks to realize that she was murdered as opposed to having died in her sleep. And that, I don't know if that was a way to, to throw off the crowd because... If she was at the crime scene, she probably knows more than any of us the answer to that question. It took the police five weeks because the cover-up didn't work. The cover-up was uncovered. 
And that's why it took the police five weeks, because they had to wait for the autopsy to confirm the police's suspicion that Melissa didn't die in her sleep. How come you went to the house and you were in and out of the house and you were hugging your friend and nothing said to you that this looks like it is more than we are led to believe? I don't understand how now she wants to blame the police for not having discovered before that Melissa was murdered. Blame your killer friend because he was the one who swore in front of God and man to protect her. So he should know, first of all, how she died and be able to come forth with truth and honesty when he announces her death. And don't forget that it's because of the police's suspicion in Melissa's death why an autopsy was done. Otherwise, her killer friend would have allowed Melissa's body to be cremated and nobody would have known how Melissa died. Just follow what I'm asking mm -hmm. you, just from people dying and yeah. stuff. When you, when, you, when you went there, did mm -hmm. it feel like, did the question go, are so much people doing up here? No, it didn't. It didn't feel that like no, way? No, because I know who, who she was and who he is. I don't think the number of people who were there matters because usually when a death is announced, especially with somebody who is so well known and so well loved, there is going to be a lot of people at the house. People are going to be coming in and out. There are going to be family members showing up ordinary people just coming to express their condolences to spend time with the with the bereaved and once those people start coming in there is going to be the desire to feed those people to get them comfortable because they are coming there to support you in your time of grief so serving drinks and sandwiches and cooking and playing dominoes and and stuff is a way to pass the time so that is not unheard of what is unheard of is people going in and out of this house where a major crime has been committed and nobody noticing anything. And that's what tells me that either they noticed but didn't say anything or Melissa was murdered from the afternoon of the 10th and they had enough time to clean up the home to make it appear pristine. Either way, whoever it is that helped Kilvera to clean up that crime scene will have to answer to the law one way or the other. She said she has not yet accepted 100% that her friend killed her other friend, but thank God the courts are not waiting for her acceptance to keep him in jail. That's where we are going to end this commentary for today, my friends. Until next time. This is Trev from Travessence, where your journey matters.